The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 11th, the Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Mixed bag out there. Mixed bag in the uh, in the sectors with inside the S&P 500 with the XLK trading to the downside. Otherwise, the other sectors are trading to the upside. The uh, Dow's up 69 points. The S&P's up two. The Nasdaq's down 90. The Russell's up nine. Semis are up 10. Trannies are up 121. I'd say we've got a mixed bag out there. Gold is up 14 bucks. Trade out of 2018 and 10 cents. Uh, silver's up 21 pennies. That's about a nine percent. A nine. A nine, nearly 1% move to the upside, nine tenths of a percent. Trade out of 25.12. Lights we crude is trading out of 8104. That's up a buck 30. Natural gas is uh, basically flat. It's 30 year treasury. 132.11 is the print. That's off seven ticks. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside. We got Mercado Libre. 24 bucks, nearly 2%. Shockwave Medical, 17 bucks, nearly 8%. MicroStrategy, 17 bucks, 5%. Kora Sushi, oh, you got to love that. That's up 20%. 11 bucks in change. We're going to have to check out Kora Sushi. I think that is a chance. Clearly, it's a chain out there. Amon Gob uh, uh, is off at 12 bucks. That's a 5% move. Moderna down 10 bucks, nearly 6%. Snowflake about 7% or 10 bucks. Intuit off about 10 or 2%. Microsoft down 7. That's about a 2.5% move from Microsoft. So let's begin by taking a look at what? I'll tell you what we're going to take a look at. We're going to go take a look at market conditions. Let's begin by taking a look at the S&P and the NQ. If we take a look at market conditions based upon their TAS market profile breadth statistics, well, here for the weekly, daily, 240 and 60-minute time frame, we have more instruments trading above the top of profile, that's bullish, versus those trading below the bottom of the profile. For the 60-minute time frame, it's 318 above, 77 below. For the four-hour time frame, it is 274 above, 62 below. For the daily time frame, it is uh, 204. Five above 56 below and for that weekly time frame we're at 127 above 104 below it is bullish for each of those time frames as we take a look at the nasdaq 100 we have those same market conditions out here bullish for the four different time frames now we do have access to a 30 minute set of profile data out here so we can take a look at the 30 minute instruments and for the s p 500 226 above 96 below we take a look at the nasdaq 100 out there so we are in a go range go zone for the s p the nq it's the 30 minute that's the little booger out there it's got 29 above and 32 below so it's very close to kind of break even out there but basically market conditions 
with regard to the task market breadth is bullish. If we take a look at market conditions as it relates to the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, we can see we're back above the plus 150 level. So it is back in that oversold territory. Now, what we may, what we may, what we may or may, depending on how you want to look at it, what we may be seeing out here is the beginning of a divergence, the type of divergence that leads to a top or a decline. So let me draw that in here. Let's get the uh, green line as soon as Stevie can find it. You know, let's go for green, not, not, there we go, green line. So what we're doing today right now at the moment, don't know what it'll be at day set, but we already have a slightly higher high above the high from, uh, well, I should say a closing basis, the April 3rd close. We're trading just slightly above that. So we've got a little bit of rising price in the uh, in the face of a declining advanced decline oscillator reading. Those are usually the ones that make the best tops, that, 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 uh, just generally speaking out there. But this has to form. It's not going to form day one. Not going to necessarily form today. But it is something to pay attention to. Being back above the plus 150 area gets you back in that overbought uh, condition. I might have said oversold. I don't know if I did. But overbought was certainly what I was uh, trying to say out there so conditions here they're still bullish though so, so oh, I, I mentioned the divergent pattern out there just so that we should be aware of it but conditions as we speak at 11 12 in the morning they are bullish and if we take a look at that spot follow today here just to really kind of cap off um the way we look at things, you're trading well below its 50-day exponential moving average out there, and that is bullish for the S&P 500, let's just say the market generally speaking. As we take a look at the equity futures out here, you can see that the bottom left is the Dow equity future contract. Price is trading above. It closed above yesterday, the top of that profile. The top of that profile, 33.737. It is is bullish and likely to go target its next A to B equals CD price projection level. That's up at the 34,135. The NQ, it has an A to B, a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern of the upside, 13,996 being its price target. Price is above the top of its profile out there. Its conditions are bullish. In the case of the ES and the Russell 2000, they're bullish, but it's in a consolidating bull. They haven't proven themselves to be able to break out above the uh, top of their profiles. In fact, the Russell did break above it for two sessions and close back below it so it's it's the weak link but it is trading back inside the recent swing point high which was from april the third and i would say if price closes above 1793.30 we're at 17.94 right now odds favor we at least get up to the 1810.97 area so let's summarize this we have bullish market breadth for everything inside the uh, whether it's a for the 30 the 60 the 240, the daily and the weekly for the S&P 500, in the case of the NQ, was just slightly negative or slightly bearish for the 30-minute time frame chart. Otherwise, its other time frames are bullish. We're trading above profile in the Dow and inside the NQ. Those are bullish. We are in the overbought zone for the advanced client oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. Those are bullish conditions. I think it sounds relatively bullish, at least as of 11.13 in the morning. Well, I guess to finish that off, where we trade in relation to Apogee out here, well, the ES Mini, it's trading above its Apogee pivot point, the uh, NQ trading right into it right now. It really, you know, so continuing close above 13.083.75 in the NQ would be bullish. If you take a look at gold yesterday, gold's pullback right down to its uh, Apogee pivot point of 19.99, found support there and took off. And lights recruit it as well above its Apogee pivot point out there. So not much else to report. Let's uh, do this. We get back from this break. Let's begin taking a look at some requests out there. And folks, I would love to hear from you as well. Makes the show easier. It provides you with the data you're looking at. So we're going to look at BBAI, B-U-Z-I for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Phil Trade wants to take a look at Micron and use the ticker symbol there. Seabroads with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds, as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol BBAI. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, Dan, this is trading right up in the TD9 count breakdown resistance area for its daily time frame at 298. You formed a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top took place on April the 3rd. That high is also being tested today. Now, that swing point out there had volume of 38 million shares. So far today, whoops, sorry about that. So far today, you are up inside with about 11 million shares. So you're pushing with uh, similar type volume. And in fact, if you were to get a close today, above uh, $3.18 and do it with more than 38 million shares, you'd have an A to B equals CD. But you've got a TD9 count top. So that's the first level that has got it clear. And again, that price point is up at the 318 area. You close above that, and then you're going to get an A to B equals CD. It's going to give you an approximate price projection of, we'll just move this over to where that uh, would just be about the the one to one would get you to about 367 or so thereabouts. But that's your real struggle right now is your TD9 count top on the daily time frame. If we take a look at the weekly time frame. Uh, you are consolidating with inside this profile, Dan, between 120 and 615. 368 is the next resistance level from a weekly standpoint. That is the uh, center of that profile. Not enough information on the monthly for it to matter for us. On a 30-minute time frame, what do we have? We've got uh, BBAI. Do we have any kind of a top out here? Was there a A to B equals CD pattern? No, there most certainly is. So that completed a sell the D point pattern. It did that when it generated a three river evening star candle formation. And what Price did, though, on that same candle, Dan, was it pulled back and it tested that green oscillator and change line and the bottom of its profile. So support is held so far. So on a 30 minute time frame, I would consider this to be a neutral territory. Successful top did what it's supposed to do. 
pull back down to test support. Support has held. Now we're neutral zone. If price closes above the high of the day so far, that's up at that 333 level. That'll negate that signal and suggest that we continue to move higher. But again, what you're really watching at day's end is going to be can price close above 318 and then set up an A to B equals C to the upside, take us up towards that 370 mark out there and negate that TD9 count top. Dan? Other than that, I don't see much else. It looks like today may be bar number three or day number three is what I really should say of consecutive moves higher. Um, you know, we've seen several, obviously, many twos, a, a few, you know, a few threes out here and a, and a four bar. So this does say that over whether it's uh, tomorrow or the next day to expect at least some type of uh, retracement, very short term, at least a short term top inside of BBAI. So I hope that helps you out, Dan. And thank you so very much for the request. Makes the show go so much easier for Stevie. Vuzi is another one that Dan wants to take a look at. B-U-Z-I, folks, is the uh, ticker symbol. This is trading out at about 430. Um, I think my delay is somewhat fixed out here. Uh, so when we take a look at Vuzi, it is trading above profile. Uh, and it closed above it yesterday. You're going to be above it today. Looks to me like what Vuzi wants to do now is go target his TD9 count breakdown resistance area. That would take us up to $4.83 out there. Do I see any other pattern? Um, you know, there certainly can be an A to B equal C to that we would draw in there. So the swing point that we would use has volume of 4, uh, 479,000 shares. Today you've done 190. So it does appear that you're going to have the volume here to set up an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, which would look like this, Dan. And I'll just simply go ahead and I'll copy this and we'll paste it. We'll try to paste it. Sometimes Stevie's not so good at the pasting thing, but I've lost my touch. There we go. So now we'd have an A to B equals CD on the daily time frame that would take us up towards the 445 level. But that's less than a 0.382 retracement. At least I can see that. So that would then suggest, again, that 483 becomes a likely target area. On a, a weekly time frame, Dan, you're trading below profile, but above the oscillator and change line. So at this stage here, it's not as if I have a bottom. However, let me take that back for a second. The swing point that was tested was from December 30th. Now, obviously, light volume you'd expect right during the holiday time period, 3.7 million shares. That was tested and rejected with 3.9 million shares. I'm going to give that a successful test rejection on lighter volume, just simply because we're dealing with, you know, December 30th. We know that's light volume. So I'd say even on the weekly chart, we had a rejection of a swing point on lighter volume, which suggests a move higher. Now here, the price target would become 466, the bottom of that profile. So at about 466, 450, 483, that really becomes a zone to the upside that we would take a look at. And the uh, monthly chart, you're just, you've held, consult, you're consolidating with inside his profile. So you like that fact too. So I like Vuzi. Today is going to be day number three, Dan, of consecutive moves higher, or it appears that it will be. Let's take a look at that chart out here. And uh, you should expect and anticipate a, a pullback, a one-day pullback. Maybe it's a two-day pullback. The last set of three consecutive days, we had one on February the 2nd. We had another on February 16th. And then today should mark the uh, next one. Not that it can't move higher. It's just odds favor what to expect and to anticipate. Of course, if we're going to see some type of pullback, what I would expect you to see is something to show up on an intraday chart. Now, I'm only showing the 30-minute time frame charts as we speak right now, but you, you, you know, you, your experience, you will take a look at the other charts out there. On a 15-minute or 30-minute basis, I should say, what we do have is a, a confirmed sell the D point pattern. That took place at 11 o'clock this morning when this generated a bearish engulfing candle. So what price should do is price and that line should test each other. Now, price can go sideways while the line is moving higher, or price can pull back. But we should see a test of that level out here, just as so we did at 10 o'clock this morning. And a uh, test rejection of that line would get you back to neutral. Neutral to bullish is the way that I would call it. So with regard to Vuzi, would not be unusual to see this uh, close higher today and then to have us a little bit of a pullback uh, that could be maybe a one to two day pullback out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Vuzi. Dan, if there's any other information you need on that, please let me know. We'll be happy to get that out to you. Uh, we had a request from Phil inside the Tigers, Dan. He wants to take a look at um, Micron. And his question is, uh, Micron, if we take a look at the weekly chart, what he's talking about, uh, and, and what Phil says is uh, this is the uh, quadruple top. So if we take a look at a high that was formed out here, and I'm just going to go to the high that set up the uh, TD9 count 
threshold uh, breakdown resistance level at 65.12. So that's the first run up there. The second run on a weekly base took place in November, November 18th. The third one, January 27th. Now, the fourth one was really a couple of weeks ago, Phil. So we had another attack out there, March 31st. Now, this is the fifth time up. Now, usually, and I'm sure you're, you're probably more familiar with it than I am, typically when we get those tops out there, it's usually the fourth move up there. When we find resistance, it's usually that fourth move up that does bust through there. So that's the initial thought right now. Now, the last time that we were up here, it's only, what, 11.25 on Tuesday. So I don't know what, what the volume will be like. 69 million shares last time we were up that week of January 27th. So far for the week, we're at, wow, we're at 53 million shares already. So it's got the volume. Here we take a look at the weekly chart. It usually is the fourth time is the charm. But the level that price needs to close above, Phil, for this to tell us that we are in breakout mode. And what I would do here is that's a consolidating pattern. I would take the uh, top and bottom of that consolidation. And if we do break out above 65.12, that would be the measured move price target, equal to or greater than the consolidating pattern. So on a daily basis, the swing point that you're dealing with out here is from uh, the most recent one was March 29th. 64.42 is a real key level of resistance as well. So I gave you 65.12 on the weekly. The daily is 64.42. Now, 64.42 is the TD9 count top. A close above that would be a bullish outcome out there. That volume on that candle session, by the way, that was 52 million shares. So far today, we're at 10. So a little bit lighter volume today, but yesterday, you were up in that same layer well, of 43 million shares. So it needs a little bit more volume on the daily basis out there. But for time up usually is the time that you bust through there. So great observation on your part. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
back, uh, folks. So uh, let me go back here real quickly, Phil. The last the last piece of information for you to uh, take a look at. Uh, that's Boozy. That wasn't it. We were looking at Micron. Uh, let me see here. So on Micron, if you take a look at the monthly time frame, that's the very right-hand panel. You'll see that that oscillator and change line is also acting as resistance here. So you know the areas to be watching. So we're really right up at this resistance level. So if you can close above that uh, as another price target, 69.77 would be an area that would be really the next price target that you would run into that would be your resistance zone in the case of uh, in the case of a uh, micron out there so uh, watch that 6442 that's a TD9 count threshold break uh, uh, resistance level out there obviously 6512 a weekly TD9 breakdown area and then you've got that oscillator and change line which right now is priced out at 6399 let's go to our next request it is from S&P inside the tiger's den and S&P wants to take a look at uh, Palantir PLTR is the ticker symbol which right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile, PLTR. That daily profile ranges from $8. This formed a couple of days ago. It ranges from $8 at support and $8.57 as resistance. So that's your parameters right there. Do we have anything else on a daily time frame? Let's open up the chart, see what we see out here, if anything. And I don't. You know, I don't see any pattern, so to speak, other than that consolidation on the daily time frame. Let's check out the weekly chart, see if there's anything here. On the weekly chart, there's also a consolidation with inside its uh, profile level. That ranges there from 718 to 942. Monthly chart for Palantir not providing us with a whole lot of information out there. Yeah, really. So there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. So it looks like on a monthly basis, the pattern would look like this. We'll draw on the A to B point, then we'll just move that over to the C point. Let's see if this is a completed pattern. No, it's not. Um, yeah, it's not. So I don't have anything for you on the monthly either. So uh, Palantir, uh, what, what can Stevie provide you with? Well, let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart. And on a 30-minute basis here, I don't have much either. Price did break above its breakdown resistance level, but it's right back below that. So I'm not getting a real clear picture with regard to Palantir. Let's take a look at its dance steps out here. It looks like this could be day number three of a consecutive rally out there. We have seen uh, four-day rallies, but they're typically two and uh, three bars. So I would say here that you would expect Palantir to at least pull back. Uh, close higher today, but pull back for the next uh, day or two out there. That's the best that I can uh, do for you. Well, let me take a quick peek out here, S&P, and see if Palantir Micron, we had checked uh, during the break, uh, or I checked during the break, PLTR for Micron, and it wasn't pulling up any data. It does pull it up for uh, Palantir. That's very odd. Not enough data points. Please use your fill. That's, that's okay. So it's not pulling anything up for that as well. Let me just try Micron once more. No, it's not there. But Mr. Bill asked if we could just simply take a look at the SMHs. This I know is available. So if you take a look at the SMHs, just look at this is the seasonal chart, folks, that we're taking a look at. And this instance here, we can go back a total of 22 years. Now, we can also add the line of where we're at today. So this gives you your reference as to uh, the uh, semiconductors, which should move higher. They typically, on an average, during the last 22 years, uh, don't top out until about the uh, first week of June. Then they move lower into about the third week of June. We get another rally up into July, July 30th. Then they move lower into the October-ish uh, lows out there, just kind of following the normal seasonal uh, pattern. We are in the month of April. It has uh, typically been a positive month. Uh, uh, over the last uh, 22 years out there. Today's Tuesday. Uh, those are, So Mondays and Fridays are the uh, bad trading days for the SMHs out there. But uh, it loves Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and it really loves that hump day out there. Best performing month for the SMH over the last 22 years has been November. Has it changed much? If we take it from 22 years down to 10, is there a substantial change? No, not really. Except April in the past 10 years has actually been slightly negative out there. That would be about the biggest change that I would see. But I see kind of a flattish type market out there. So that's what I see. We take a look at the SMHs with regard to their seasonal pattern. So since we did that, let's just simply go take a look at the SMH uh, ETF and see what kind of patterns we can identify out there. This is for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. So we'll let this go ahead and populate. Again, SMHs are signaling to you and I that they should continue to move higher 
So let's take the SMHs. They did find support at the bottom of their daily profile. That was at 249.86. Uh, should go target at least the center of that profile line, right at about 248.53. Um, oh, wait a minute. I may have a caller, and if I do, my apology. Give me a second here to uh, get to that. So we get out of this. Sorry, folks, a little bit of housekeeping here. And we do. So we're gonna, we'll come back to the SMHs, Mr. Bill. I apologize. I left Brent on hold. Brent, thanks for holding extra time, and thanks for calling. How are you today? I'm doing well, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And it's that natural gas that uh, you've got an interest in. Tell me what you're doing, how I can best help you. Oh, I noticed we had a decent reversal bar yesterday, and then today we're toying with that 219. It was above it earlier and then dropped below it, and now it's back above it. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. And I had two other questions that I assume you're looking at the May contract. Is that correct? With the yeah, prices I mean, that you're – okay. And then I also wanted to know – when you're taking the closing price, are you using the – it's kind of odd because I think they actually used the price for my time. It's like 1130, I believe, is the time, almost like the gold contract. And these commodities, they seem like they have a you know, particular time. I guess that's when the pits used to close. Whatever it is, that's, they still use that, that number. Is that what you're using? You know, that's a great question. And I don't believe that that is the number that I that, that is being generated for me. But let me just take a look. So, um, I mean, what I show is yesterday's close. And I might have two different closes. Up. No, I should have the same. Well, I'm using two different systems right now to try to answer that question for you. So, uh, you know, what I got as the close yesterday, Brent, was 201 on one system. And the other system is also a 201. Did that match up to yours? Mm -hmm. I actually have 217 for if you're using the May contract. 217, yeah, the May contract. Yeah, I've got, I have for whatever reason to close at, uh, oh, 217. I apologize. 217. You know what it is? I, I struggle reading. So sorry about that. Yeah, 217. So we got that same close out there. But uh, as we take, let me switch over to my white. Uh, so I'm on the white side of screens out here. So if we take a look at natural gas, and, and as I've shared, uh, uh, folks, uh, if you're if you're not sure why Brett mentioned the 219 level, 219 is the center of the daily profile. Now, I'm going to open this up. That profile is bullish in structure. Typically, when you close below the bottom of a bullish structured profile for two consecutive sessions, which this did on April 3rd and on April 4th, what we typically see is that that center line acts as a counter trend level where price finds resistance. And so far it has. That's at 219. If we did get a close above 219, then, Brent, I would presume that price will make its way up to the 234 level. And the reason that I say that is because typically when you close above the center of a bullish structure profile, the buyers are able to push price right up to the next level of resistance. That would be at that 234 level. As we take a quick peek at the intraday chart, see if there's anything out here that's providing us with information or signals. Um, not really. So the only pattern, the only really active pattern at the moment that I see, Brent, comes from a 15-minute time frame. And that 15-minute time frame for the TD9 count bottom, it did it at 10.15. Price right now is dealing with the resistance level, which is the top of its profile. And that's up at 2.209. If this closes above that, we'll see a move up to 2.242. That's a CD9 count breakdown resistance level. That's some information. Hang on, Brent. Come back. We'll further take a look and discuss natural gas. And, of course, you had a couple of other instruments for us to look at as well. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're with, uh, speaking with Brent uh, from Martinez, California. He's on the line. We're taking a look at the May contract for natural gas. Uh, again, the only real bottoming pattern that I see out here is a 15-minute time frame. And right now, it's signaling to you and I that it wants to trade up to that 2.242 level out there. But uh, the ideal thing, Brent, I think, is a close above 219 today. It's not a guarantee that it's the bottom. Um, because price would really need to close by that 234 level to give us, uh, you know, a little bit more assurance that this was the uh, seasonal bottom, so to speak, out there. But, Brent, is there anything else that you're looking at in natural gas or any other time frame or anything that I can pull up for you? Or what questions does this information pose? I think that was it. I, I think you kind of answered the other question I was going to ask. What, what would be the, the level you would be looking at to get above and stay above that would uh, indicate a, a, you know, change in trend? And that sound like the set two thirty four. Is that right? It well, that would be one level. So let me just. Uh, so great question, and let me answer it uh, uh, this way. Uh, that's the uh, level on the daily time frame that we were looking at, and on the weekly time frame, it's two forty three right now. So I'm going to open up the weekly time frame. This is for the May contract, and ideally, what we would see out here, Brent, would be a close above that red oscillator and change line which is currently printed at 243. So that number is going to change, as you know, as price moves up and down. But that would then be the uh, that would then be the next piece of the puzzle that natural gas has put in a, a bottom. Now, it's going to have battles um, above that area, 253 and a 281 and 308. But at least we've given us the signal, knowing that we're in still the, the favorable seasonal cycle, that a, that, a, that a solid bottom is likely in out there. That, that's how I would look at it. Okay. And I assume you want to see a, at least a two-day... A hold of that 219 is, is going to be, you know, it would not, be, not it would be, that, hey, hey, Brent, right now I take a one day. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the way that he's been acting, yeah, you just, it gets your hopes up and then just kind of, you know, it's like whack a mole kind of slaps you down. Uh, yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've, I've been heartbroken three times so far, but I'm, I'm still, still paying attention to it. Right at some point in time, what goes down, you know, must go up too. At some point, you would think. You would hope so. Yeah, like a yeah. bouncing ball or something. Exactly. All right, exactly. Uh, I appreciate it so much, Steve. Just have yourself a great day. You bet. Thank you for calling. Thanks for waiting. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, let me do, go back here real quickly, folks. I would take a look at the seasonal oh, for the SMHs. Uh, where I was was actually take a look at the charts. So excuse me, uh, the ice cube slid right through that slot, and uh, I'm just trying to melt it, and that's usually done by chewing it. So that wasn't it wasn't Micron, it was the SMHs. There we go. So the SMHs out here. Look, all that I really have. Well, let's just see here. Let's pull this weekly chart back. So you've got to confirm sell the D point that took place last week with that bear sash candle. But the question is, price above its green oscillator and change line, if it closes the week above 255.64, we're 255.88 right now, and the signal will be neutralized, completely neutralized out there. So the SMHs, even though they've got a sell signal on the weekly time frame, not so committed to it, uh, at least at, uh, as of 1145 on Tuesday. And the monthly time frame chart says, I don't know what kind of sell signal you guys are talking about. I want to get up to 280 to 290. Now, the daily does have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top, but price did its job. It pulled back to support 249.86. That held. And so now you can't bust them down. Price should at least try to bust them up in 258.43 is the next area. So I do hope that helped you out there, uh, Mr. Uh, Bill, with regard to the seasonality. And I believe we got uh, Palantir for SMP. Oh, no. Did we get Palantir? Let me make sure. Yeah, I think I think we did. Uh, Oh, Stevie's losing it out here. I think we did. We got Palantir out there. So if if, if we didn't SMP, uh, please uh, get back to me and, and remind me here. But you did want to take a look at Gush as well, G-U-S-H. And that Gush is the uh, S&P oil uh, exploration. Now, this is the 2X out there. Uh, so let me just go ahead. We'll take a look at this. I believe that you are long this. So let's take a look at Gush, which is trading right now at about 135. It's actually trading 136.85. So I've got a bit of a delay here, unfortunately. What it's doing is taking out its swing point from the trading session of April 3rd. Now, that swing point at volume of 827, you're at 177 as we speak right now. So it seems to me a bit light out there. The reason I was taking a look at that is because if it clears that, you could get a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's just do it like this. You're trading above profile. That's bullish. You're trading above its oscillator and change line. That's bullish. Your resistance zone is going to be that level that we were trying to eye. That's at 137.45. If you clear that volume or not, price should then go target 146.31. That's its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. On the uh, weekly time frame, you're consolidating with inside its profile. The monthly is not going to give us any kind of information out there. So um, I, uh, I hope that helps you out. So, yeah, we got Gush, and you are welcome. Uh, and you're welcome as well, Mr. Bill. So the next request is coming in from Duffy, and Duffy wants to take a look at EXK. So let's fire up EXK, see what this is doing. Let me get this going on my other system as well, since we've got this data feed, and I don't want to provide you with inaccurate information. It's printed out at 434. This is Endeavor Silver that we're taking a look at. It's up at a new high today, so that's a beautiful thing. It's above last week's highs, so that's a beautiful thing. So we take a look at its daily time frame. This negated or is negating its TD9 count top as we speak right now. So, uh, Duffy, this is a very strong upward momentum stock as we speak right now. That's what you like to see on the daily time frame. There is an A to B equals CD pattern that is present out there, uh, but it's on the weekly time frame chart as well. Let's just draw it in on the weekly chart. The weekly chart, I believe we're already past the one-to-one -one level, so this is going to be an extension. But here's your A to B would actually go like that. And then we would take that line, put it over here at the uh, bottom of the C point, and you can see we're past the one-to-one. -one. And we are really on the left-hand side of that uh, of that line out there. It tells us about a strong upward momentum move, a more than a one A to B equals CD pattern that is unfolding out here. So Endeavor Silver is strong like bull. Now, where's its next resistance level? That's an excellent question. The next resistance level would be the center of that monthly profile. So 455, 
We're trading right now at 434. As you get up there, what I'd like you to do is fasten your seatbelt. That doesn't mean that it's over. It just means that expect a little bit of turbulence. And if price can clear that at 456, well, then you're getting up to the 595, 573 type area out there. So Endeavor Silver, EXK, looks very good. What's the weakness inside of Endeavor Silver? you got to find something, Stevo. Well, the only weakness that I see out here at this stage is we should get a TD9 count top that forms by 1230. So, uh, and you know, this rose momentum indicator signal triggered. I don't worry about that. We can see the last TD9 count top that took place out here on a 30 minute basis. Now, that most certainly worked. That, that took place at the 1300 hours. That was on April the 6th. And what did price do? Moved right back to support. That was the bottom of his profile and took off from there. So, expect and anticipate. A, a retracement that should only take you back towards that oscillator and change line and that should begin by about 12 30 out there that is exk and that was for duffy inside the tiger's den g-man wanted to take a look at disney dis is the ticker symbol out there and so let's get that fired up see what that is doing again let me get that on my other screen too so i've got disney right now trading out at about uh 101 19. it's above yesterday's high and it's above the uh, top of its daily profile which it closed above yesterday so you've got an a to b equals cd pattern out here this is going to be more than a one to one a to b equals cd as well there's your a to b signal or line here's your c to d you're already above that level uh, so what you're watching for here at Disney can, should continue to move higher. 107.95 is a price target. 105.84 is another price target. Those are your two price targets. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, Disney should continue to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, the question on uh, Disney was, uh, you know, where where's an entry point out there? And I'd have to say, so you've got that A to B equals C to the upside. I'm assuming you're not a uh, chaser out there. And so wait for that. Uh, well, I don't, of course, we don't know whether a Gartley sell pattern will form or not. But I'd wait for that and then a pull back into support. Support could be anywhere between 98.01 and 98.62. Of course, we'll have to bust back through the top of its daily profile out there. But I'd be waiting for at least some type of short-term bottoming pattern out there. And here's the 30-minute time frame chart. That's a, that's, that's a real good one. Um, there's nothing that I can show you right now that is a, a pattern here. Well, you'd look at something like this, like, for example, TD9 count bottom, which Disney formed. It completed that at 1130 in the morning. That was back on March the 24th. So you're looking at some type of pattern like that as your entry into uh, Disney or really, quite frankly, any instrument out there. Maybe you go down to a 15 minute chart, but 15 or or 30 would probably be the uh, best. Um, let's uh, go take a look at our last request out here. This is going to be for Mara, and uh, M-A-R-E-A is the uh, ticker symbol. This is for uh, McGuppy inside the Tiger. I'm looking for an upside target. So the upside target that I would use out here, so you got a nice weekly TD9 count, Roadsman indicator bottom, price to trade above last week's highs. I would say that 1412 is a upside target. That's its weekly TD9 count breakdown resistance. 1149 or thereabouts is another upside target that happens to be the monthly oscillator and change line. If we take a look at the daily time frame, uh, yesterday price negated a TD9 count. No, it's doing that today. So you're negating the TD9 count top. You do have resistance at 1014. If price can close above 1014, that's what's going to get you to that monthly oscillator and change line at 1149. You get above 1149. Then the next area of resistance for you is at 1412. At 1412. What's that going to get us? That's going to get us right back to both the weekly TD9 count breakdown level and a daily TD9 count breakdown level as well. So we did make it through all those requests. Thank you so very, very much. It's always so kind of you to do that. It makes things flow so simple for me. Dow's up 121. S&P's up 2. I'd expect the markets to close higher today. And then we at least set a pullback likely tomorrow on CPI Day. Folks, have a terrific Tuesday. I'll see you on wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. Take care.